Hello all, welcome to my YouTube channel All About VLSI. In this video, we are going to discuss about burst operation in EXA and addressing options in EXA. So before going into this video, make sure that you have subscribed to my YouTube channel and press that bell icon for more video updates. So now let's get dive into this video. So the burst operation in AXA. First of all, the AXA the AXA protocol is burst based protocol which is designed to support high performance communication between the different components in the system. So basically a burst is nothing but transfer of sequence of data items between the master and the slave. That is in a burst the data items say this is data item D1 and this is D2 and this is D3 so on between the master and the slave are sent sequentially are transferred between the master and the slave sequentially so this is a burst operation so the AXA protocol is burst based protocol which is designed to support high performance communication when a burst is initiated by the master the master when the burst is initiated the master is responsible for driving both the control and address information the master is responsible for driving both the control and address information of the first byte in the transfer. The master is responsible for transferring the control and address information of the first byte in the transfer. So as the burst transaction progresses, it becomes the responsibility of the slave to calculate the address of the subsequent transfers within the burst. So uh, this, this data items are stored in different location in the address. So here it is the address say this is so there are different locations in this ad, in this memory so there are different locations in this memory and the data items which are sent in the form of burst from the master to the slave say this is data d1 d2 d3 or so on d5 so the data items which are sent in a form of burst from the master the slave it is the so in the form of so the data items which are sent by the master in the form of burst it becomes the responsibility of the slave to manage this data items to store each data item in different locations so it's the responsibility of the slave to store each respective data item in its respective address location. So based on the initial address provided, the slave handles the address incrementation of for the ongoing transfers in the burst. Initial address of the initial address will be given by the master. So the initial address, say suppose address 00, 0 will be given by the master. So the slave will then increment the address from this initial address say from 00 it will increment to 01 then 02 and 03 like this like this from 01 02 03 the slave will store the different slave will show uh, slave will store the respective data items in the respective memory locations depending upon the initial address which is supplied by the master 4KB boundary constraints. Bursts in the AXA protocol are instructed not to cross the 4KB boundary constraints. For example, in a system, we have two slaves and one master. We have a master and this is slave 1 and slave 2. So, thus the memory allocated for the slave 1 will be 4KB and the memory allocated for this slave 2 will be 4kb that is this will be this mem uh, the memory for the slave 1 will be initial address 2 initial address plus 4kb memory to some point and after this point the memory for slave 2 will be start and it will be 2 plus 4 kb 
like this. So the slave one will be given a set of 4KB memory and the slave two will be given another set of 4KB memory. So like this, a 4KB boundary constraints will be placed by allocating a particular set of memory to particular slave. That is a 4KB memory is given to one set of 4KB memory is given to slave one and another 4KB of memory will be given to slave two. So when the master sends the burst to the slave one and the slave one according to the initial address given by the master will increment it address and it will internally increment the address locations from say from initial address to it will go on increasing its address and it will store the data items which are sent by the master in the form of burst and it will go on storing the items and after reaching the 4KB boundary limit, it should not go beyond this 4KB boundary limit in order to differentiate this slave 1 and slave 2, the memory is divided between these slaves. Let's see about this burst length. So, AW LEN, AW length for the right burst, we are seeing about right burst. So this AW length signal specifies the number of data transfers within each burst initiated by the master for the write operation. So in a write operation, when a master is sending the burst, the master is sending the data items in the form of burst, let's say let's say this is the burst. So in this burst, they are D1, D2, D3, D4, four data items in this one burst. So AW, and AW length will specify how many number of data items are there in this particular burst. So in this particular burst, so there are four data items. So this AW and length, AW length is specifying how many data items which are present in this burst and whereas in case of read burst the signal a r length is used to specify how many data items which are present in a particular burst so a r length will specify the number of data transfers within each burst initiated by the master for read operation so this is about a w length and a r length so this table indicates the AR length and AW length and this AR length or AW length is of 4 bit size and if it is 4 zeros then the number of data transfers is equal to 1 and if it is 0, 0, 001 it is number of data transfers are 2 and 0, 0, 0010 0 is 3 so on if it is 111 then the number of data transfers are equal to 16 like this AR length and AW length are used to tell how many number of data transfers which are sent in a single burst. So in every transaction whether it is a read or write burst must have the number of transfers specified by AR length or AW length. For suppose in a write transfer if AW length is equal to 4 tick binary 0001 that is equal to 2 number of data items in a burst then the burst must contain two number of data items in the burst. So the burst must contain two number of data items. So every transaction whether it's a read or write burst must have the number of transfers specified by AR length or AW length and no early termination. No component in the AXA protocol can terminate a burst prematurely to reduce the number of data transfers. So no, if a master is in a write transaction and if it is sending a burst and it contains four number of data items so the master cannot terminate a burst prematurely for reducing the number of data transfers it should transfer if it specified aw length as 0001 that is two number of data transfers that then it should supply two number of data transfers in that burst. Next, write burst handling. 
During a write burst, the master has the option to disable further writing by deasserting all the write troops. However, this action only prevents new data from being written in subsequent transfers within the burst. So during the write operation between a master and a slave, if a master initiates a burst operation, then the master has the option to disable the further writing by deasserting all the write troops. The master may deassert write operation. The master may deassert this write operation by the master may disable further writing by deasserting all the write tropes. We will discuss about these trope concepts in our upcoming videos. So the master has the ability to disable further write operation by disabling all these write tropes, but the present but the present burst operation will continue any new however this action only prevents the new data from being written in the subsequent transfer within the burst only the new data will be disabled but the present data will continue but the present burst will continue its operation so the master needs needs to ensure that the data transfer initiated at the beginning of the burst are completed even if chooses not to send the new data. Read burst handling. So also the master has the flexibility to further discard a read data. So if a master is receiving a data in a read operation, it has an ability to disable further data items from the slave, but it should accept the read data which is initiated at the beginning and it should completely accept the data and after that, if it wishes, it can disable the further read data by deassetting trope signal by using the show signal, which we will discuss in the upcoming videos. So similar to write burst, the master need to complete the remaining transfers within the burst. So this is the part one video of the burst operations in AXA protocol. We have discussed about the length, AW length and AR length and uh, and we have discussed about the write burst handling and read burst handling. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel, All About VLSA. Thank you for watching this video.